I guess, are we just going to be frozen? Okay. Okay. Why are we frozen? What do you mean? You ruined the joke. It doesn't work now. <laughs> That's what the whole wave is all about. God damn it. I didn't see the wave. <laughs> Did you wave? God. I thought we were doing one of these. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Welcome to episode 17 welcome, welcome, welcome. of the, the podcast. I think it's 17. I'm pretty sure it's 17. 17 or 18. One of the two. Uh, I am joined by the amazing Zero Strategy podcast team. We have Grog. Hello. We have Sir Humps. Hello. We have the beardless kibbles, which oh I don't like. Gosh. You're gonna have to change it. <laughs> <laughs> you also have to change your Twitter handle. It's no longer the mighty yeah. kibbles. It's the beardless kibbles. No. Yep. That you, will fit. You're gonna have to change it. You're a little less mighty. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> and we have a special guest today, G Flow. What's up, guys? How's it going? Hey, hey, hey. hey. <laughs> so just to get a little bit of background, uh, Gflow, I don't know if you want to introduce yourself and um, tell people where they can find you, what your content's like, and just give us a, a bit of sure. flavor. Sure, a little bit about that. Sure. What's, what's up, guys? So my name is Gflow. Uh, I've been streaming for close to a decade now. Oh, shit. Uh, did... <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, I... <laughs> I did a lot of things, uh, I guess, kind of going in. I've been involved in the industry in a bunch of different ways. Worked with a bunch of different companies, streamers, YouTubers. Tried doing the content creation thing. I was a partner over on Mixer. Now I'm over here streaming on Twitch. Uh, play a lot of Final Fantasy, RPG, story-based games. Uh, I don't do shooters anymore because I'm old. I have arthritis and I can't shoot no more. So it's pretty brother. much... I that's, feel you, brother. that's a good that's excuse. I'll give you right that one. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I used to play a lot of shooters, not so much anymore. I grew up on Halo 2. That was my first uh, bread and butter. Now uh, now I just sit here and uh, I let the, the game auto-shoot for me. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the reasons why I thought um, G Flow would be an amazing guest is he's, he's pretty much done it all. He, he's had his finger in every single pie, to, to say the least. He's been on Mixer. He's been on Twitch. He's played... Pretty much, I would assume the majority of uh, MMOs. I mean, For the most part, yes. I yes, think yes. I think that's I, mean, I think that's originally I mean, where I uh, met you. You were I'm sure yeah. you were playing Final Fantasy. Um, yeah, I mean, I can probably say off the top of my head, I've probably put on Final Fantasy the MMO. I've put at least thir uh, sixteen thousand hours already into it. Holy, wow! So if yeah. there's any any Final Fantasy <laughs> questions in the chat. This is your man right here, one hundred percent. Either either that, I think my second highest game or series would be Monster Hunter. I think I've put close to thirteen thousand hours between the entire series. Damn. So. I don't well, even want to. Numbers. No, I. Yeah. Big numbers. I don't even want to know like how many how many that is in like days. Somebody in chat do the math. Like how many. Thirteen thousand hours and days. Context, no, people are like, no, 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 don't do that, don't do that. I mean, it, like in context for chat, like that is wild because in the three years the Destiny Two has been out, I thought I had done a lot at around like three thousand hours, and according to Wasted on Destiny, that's like the top one to two percent of de the Destiny player base. So sixteen thousand or thirteen thousand hours is like. Point oh 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 one of something like it, that's just that is <laughs> my wild. kids are not thirteen thousand years old. <laughs> thirteen thousand years old. <laughs> this man has found the fountain of youth. <laughs> so the the first topic that I do want to talk about today is uh, mental health. Uh, men uh, uh, can't even speak. Mental health. And not specifically just personal, but within the um, the gaming industry as well. Uh, you see a lot of misconceptions. You see a lot of articles based around mental health in the gaming industry. And um, when I was doing a little bit of, of research for this question, the amount of bullshit that you that you actually find online surrounding gaming and mental health is ridiculous. Uh, one of the the stats that I seen: if you play more than two hours every single week. You are greater of developing mental health issues later down the line, and I don't really understand where where they got those statistics from because gaming hasn't really been 
out that long. What the uh, I'm trying to think of the first gaming system. Was it the Commodore 64? Maybe that came out in the 80s. So, what's everyone's take on? First of all, the mental health situation, personally and within the the gaming industry. Has anybody got any any takes on it? I think that um, within any with any culture or subculture, you know, um, especially pertaining to like a hobby, um, there tends to be an undercurrent that ties a lot of people together. And often it's not always obvious what that is, but then it's one of those things where it's kind of unspoken, um, be it, you know, a, a musical genre, be it like, you know, a musical subculture or, or, or sport or what have you. And I think in gaming, a lot of people have issues um, with anxiety and depression. Um, it's a, at least in my experience, um, th that is true. And I think when, uh, interacting with other content creators and other people who have expressed their feelings online, that there typically is a thread that runs through not all, but many, um, people's backgrounds. And I think that I don't, I would not ascribe like whatever s studies can be made, uh, to, have an agenda you know like so so the study that said like you know you play two hours a week or something and it's it's going to skew your your mental health in some capacity i don't i personally don't buy that because for me um gaming has actually been a, a life-saving device same um and and i don't mean that in a like a figurative like allegorical sense like i i mean like i literally would have been dead um were it not for games and people that I've met through gaming. Um, so I think that there are people typically when like some, something drops in the news, um, you know, video games and music tend to get thrown under the bus as the culprits for uh, why, you know, a generation is the way it is. Um, it's, it's kind of a lazy argument um, to say, Oh, well this, this event wouldn't have happened or, you know, um, you know, this tragedy wouldn't have happened if, you know, uh, games weren't the way they were. Um, there have been plenty of sort of counter studies that have demonstrated that uh, games like reading um, can offer gateways into uh, broader empathy. Obviously, it depends on the kind of game or gaming, but um, being able to put yourself in someone else's position and experience a situation um or a narrative through someone else's eyes can be extremely enriching and rewarding um to paraphrase like not paraphrase but to cite a, an example from um recent game uh news like last of us both last of us one and last of us two uh have been instrumental in like showing people how characters can grow and and how we can look at people in ways that might have easily been missed or just glossed over um, in a different game and by way of like uh, exploring a narrative in an interactive medium like video games you can come to know people better and you can come to know yourself better um, so yeah I think kind of some of those studies that are like video games are bad I think a lot of that's just bullshit yeah I feel like definitely over the last say five years the the whole culture of mental health like I, I remember back in the day it used to be just a suck it up move on um and like present day there's there's a lot more like vices there's a lot more um avenues to explore where you can get help and um, like you say video games saved your life uh, it's it's interesting to see how the cultures actually progressed over a short amount of time because like i say Back in the day, it used to just be a suck it up and move on. And I, I feel like we've we've moved on. Like, our... I wouldn't say generation, but, like, our... Um, like, gamers as a whole, we, we seem to support each other. And it directly conflicts with a lot of the, the studies where it just says... All gamers are going to be violent people if you're, you're shooting in video games. And it's... It's interesting to be on this side of the fence because obviously I've had a lot of mental health issues and obviously gaming was my vice and uh, that was one of the reasons why I started streaming. It was to meet people, to get my mind off a lot of things and just kind of escape for 
an extended uh, amount of time. Um, it's it's a confusing one, but it, it's good that we're having this conversation. I think um, what goes along, with, uh, like to add on to it, like I know uh, from a personal perspective, everyone says like, you know, mental health, you know, uh, video games do help and they do. Um, they kind of help give you that, that that little bit of like being able to interact with people if you're, you know, an antisocial individual. But I'd also like to like tack on to that, that like the industry and the, um, you know, companies are also kind of tacking onto it. And I speak for personal experience. So like a, a while ago, I had a, um, I had a, I attended PAX South and I did a, um, I did a panel on veterans and gaming. And it was interesting because once I got done with that panel, um, I had a woman approach me and she was talking about like, Hey, would you be interested in flying to DC? We're doing exposure therapy with video games. Now, I don't know if any of you guys know what exposure therapy is. I've so exposure, that, yeah. yeah, exposure therapy is something that uh, a lot of veterans do in order to uh, be overexposed to something that can be very traumatic or cause a very traumatic, uh, you know, like a, a PTSD episode, uh, sort to speak, so that they become so numb to it that they don't no longer have to worry about that. And I, and I use example. Uh, we have a lot of video gamers here. Anyone here ever play Medal of Honor, the 2010 game that came out in like PlayStation? Oh yeah. Two? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yep. Now, something traumatic or something that can like really affect mental health is like very little key details. Uh, I don't know if any of you guys remember, but there was a mission in there somewhere where you would hear the squelching in the radios when they're communicating back and forth. Um. That was one. That was one scene that a literally a a government entity used for exposure therapy to expose soldiers to because they would react to that squelch. That squelch was so realistic uh, to the point where soldiers were having like PTSD episodes. They were panicking. They were just going through like a really big, uh, really big thing. So like when I went and when I went and I and you know put myself through that as well too. It's it's awesome to see that. It's not just, you know, people themselves are like going through and they're like, you know, overcoming these these obstacles of like, you know, you know, I think it's bullshit that, you know, two hours a day kind of causes whatever these articles are saying, because if you got companies like this that are going out and they're using video games as a way to kind of help veterans or people in general. I mean, it doesn't have to be veterans to like expose themselves to it so that they become more comfortable with stuff like that, you know, so personally for me it's it's nice to it's it's nice to be able to see that from companies that they're trying to incorporate video games as a way to kind of be like therapy to help people instead of calling it like oh this is the reason why you guys are you know i don't know not bettering yourself or etc cetera, etc cetera. yeah so out of curiosity did you actually go on the, that experiment i i did um i was at the time i was still in north carolina um, they actually found out who my uh, who my superiors were, and they put me on orders to go to DC. They paid for pretty much everything, uh, and I went through a, a two week ex extensive program where it was just uh, about four to six hours of exposure therapy, like straight through. Um, and then you know I'd sit there talk with a doctor about it, just kind of like what was going on through my mind, how did it feel? Like they they just had they had so many like uh, they used. Quite a few video games. Some of the other st uh, uh, other audio clips were from videos from actual missions and stuff like that. But uh, they did use uh, part part of it. I'd say like a quarter of it was video game usage of like to exposure therapy and stuff like that. So it was good. I mean, I liked it. It was a good two weeks. It was rough, but um, it definitely did help. Hundred percent. That that four to six hours with, with the statistic that you gave us earlier, where you've got like sixteen thousand hours in Final Fantasy, I can imagine you just being. Is that it? Okay. <laughs> When's breakfast? <laughs> it's most definitely a little bit different when you're sitting there playing Final Fantasy. You know, you're over there. You know, you know, slaying bad guys and stuff like that. It's whatever. But when you're sitting there listening to sounds of like gunshots, explosions, radio squelches. Uh, um unfortunately the sounds of people screaming mm -hmm. stuff like that it you know those four to six hours do feel like an eternity after a while i, bet. I can I imagine bet. so obviously yeah. uh we do have uh humps and g flow that have been in the army uh you were the navy as well humps is that right well just the navy not as well well you, you know what i mean yeah, i didn't like i didn't like do the, the army navy and the navy and the, the army <laughs> Just, just the navy just the it was navy. kind of a jack of all trades <laughs> I, did all of them. I did all of them i was bored so <laughs> two years at each one <laughs> yeah so if you if you look at the broad spectrum of of like articles and and people that say like 
violence in video games make you a violent person? And considering your background, not making a correlation between the two of them, do you find violence in video games makes you a violent person? Because the reason why I ask that question is obviously you guys have been put in a position where I would say, for lack of a better term, violence was almost your job. You know, you were in the army, you were in the navy. The sole reason for that is to protect people, yeah? So, you find that, like, those quotes within the articles, violence in video games makes violent people. Would you agree with that? No, I mean, uh, in that statement, no. I mean, no. I, I, I texted in a little chat. I was just like, you know, people have been shitty far before video games were around. You know what I mean? Like... <laughs> Very true. <laughs> uh, all the worst types of things you can hear, you've heard about people doing, they've been happening a long time. You know what I mean? No. So it's like just because video games are, you know, some video games are violent and on. I mean, it's, I don't think they Personally, have. I blame video games for the Crusades. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because like every, every experience that I've had with video games is not nothing but like joy and happiness you know completing a level leveling up on a mmo it it doesn't it doesn't sit right with me that a lot of these companies are actually just blaming video games for for what seems like just blaming video games i don't i don't really understand it yeah i well, think what they like to do is um take outliers of people who have severe mental illnesses who would already have acted violently and then kind of use that as and i guess there could be an argument for someone who is on that like breaking point could it push them over could it not could it help them i don't think there's been enough out there to really research into it and it's kind of unfortunate well kind of add on to that and i'm just thinking out loud right now that's <laughs> all i'm doing so processes haven't happened quite yet <laughs> i thought i could smell burning <laughs> no, i mean so i mean the uh blanking happens g flow i blank all the time just give me a second i'll, I'll you'll get used to it it's <laughs> a thing it's a thing uh, what did you say, Kibbles? <laughs> you about the Crusades? <laughs> no. Oh, so I was going to—I was going to make—I was going to make kind of a correlation. So I mean, people that do horrible, horrible things, I would put them in the category they are mentally ill, right? They have some sort of something wrong to where their process, how they think, how they relate is skewed in a way that isn't normal and it is an illness and so having and it's almost kind of like uh like an alcohol and not an actual an alcoholic you know what i mean if you have that stimuli in front of them and they drink what are they going to do they're going to keep drinking they're an alcoholic it's a disease they're an alcoholic so if you have someone that's already in that mindset kind of already in that kind of mental illness state you put that type of stimuli in front of them i could see in that situation it being kind of more of a that's the push you're going to see so it's not the game it's the person obviously um so that's just kind of what popped in my head there's <laughs> yeah i mean there's I, there are people who are pre predispossessed to a certain behavior may be more easily prompted by things that are going to provoke that are going to provoke that behavior. I think like um, two comments that really stood out for me in chat of, of, of many. Um, one, I think a lot of this comes up because as Vul pointed out, um, sort of the game's argument is often a means to sculpt a narrative um, for another group uh, to shift the focus away from other topics. Gun control is, regardless of where you stand on gun control, um, you know, video games often are subject to criticism uh, as it ties back to gun control and often it's used as a way to, to shift the, the the narrative to something else um, right. rather than having to talk about something that's difficult and, and harder to unpack uh, it's easier to just like throw it under the bus um, and we as thing... people are great at that <laughs> <laughs> yep. yeah, we're real good at that, yeah. <laughs> we love it 
And another comment that I thought was really good uh, that uh, Suki Sue pointed out, um, they said, uh, I think when people climb mountains and hills every weekend or after work, spend crazy hours at the gym, it's seen as positive mental health. But when you spend time gaming, people judge you. It definitely depends on your preferences. That's 100 percent true there. Uh, I have friends um, who have turned to fitness um, because they struggle with mental health issues or they struggle with depression or they are an overcoming addict um, or overcoming addiction rather. And, um, and for some people, it's been amazing. And for some people, it's just replaced the addiction. Um, and it has kind of like, not necessarily fixed the problem, but it's allowed them to kind of like push themselves and overextend themselves uh, to the point of damaging their body in a different way. Um, it's just self control and moderation is a thing that humans don't do well. <laughs> and um, as with anything, it's not about games being good or bad. It's just about moderating our interaction with them uh, and understanding what we can really take away from them because our lives as people um, are really shaped holistically by the whole world around us, not just one thing. So, you know, the movie that I watched last night isn't going to affect what I have for dinner today. Um, I mean, it could, but it probably won't. Um, but eventually, enough of any one thing, any one influence in your life, be it um, a person either positive or toxic, uh, a activity that is good or bad. I mean, you know, we're, we're talking like sort of vague universal morality here, but like um, those things can, it's gonna differ for each person. And like some people can go to the gym crazy hours and they're fine. Other people like can push themselves to the point of injury. Um, same with video gaming. Um, but the thing is you have, you can't, what works for one person doesn't mean it doesn't work for somebody else. And it doesn't mean that the entire scope of it is bad. Um, because life is just nuanced. It's full of gray areas. And I don't think that there's absolutes, um, and trying to find absolutism, um, in a topic like gaming, uh, as a broad issue, um, is just not possible. There's, like, for example, Condi mentioned um, in chat the game Hellblade. Hellblade was um, phenomenal for allowing people who maybe don't experience um, certain instances of depression or anxiety or, or, or fear or alienation to feel that in a game in a way that was meant to be immersive, was meant to be engaging of the, 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 the player and make the player better sympathize and better understand what the character is going through this war of mine was a game that uh, was developed by a polish game studio it's set in eastern europe and it's a war game and it's about war but it's not about the soldiers it's just about civilians and survival it is about the 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 toll on the human psyche uh, mm -hmm. and the physical experience that civilians have to go through when faced with you know real conflict um that was an incredible game because, again, it, it allowed you to empathize with a perspective that just would not be accessible to someone maybe just sitting at their home in a comfortable job, you know, with a comfortable socioeconomic background. So these things can allow us to be, um, they can be transportive. Um, and I, I don't know, I, th I think video games just get maligned usually because people don't don't want to have more difficult topics or they don't want to have deeper conversations about more difficult topics. <laughs> 100%. And I feel like hell on you go. No, you go. Yep, you go. Yeah, we'll go. <laughs> I feel like Hellblade actually broke down a lot of barriers. Like just to hone into something that you said, Grog, it it kind of it gave people that haven't actually experienced mental mental health if not to that extent or not at all to actually be in someone else's mind and i don't know about the rest of you i've played that game twice and i still don't think that i've uncovered every single piece that that they were trying to portray that that to me was a masterpiece i played that on um it was my 28th 28th birthday i was doing a 24 hour stream and i played it as soon as it came out all the way to the end and my mind was blown. It was a phenomenal game. I think that that's one that will genuinely go down in history. And I think they've actually talked about making a second one as well. Yes. Yeah. So it'd be There's interesting. In production, I believe. 
So it'll be interesting to see how that kind of expands. Because if I, in fact, I won't spoil it, but if I can remember correctly, it was almost like the storyline had completely finished. You know, you had got from point A to point B and then it kind of left itself. So it'll be interesting to actually see how that, that picks off again. So yeah, I, haven't, I haven't played that yet, but I've been meaning to. It's, it's installed on Steam and it's been installed. <laughs> For like, what, two years? <laughs> yeah, join the rest of the club. <laughs> it's it's a phenomenal game. You you have to be in the right headspace. And I know this, this is going to sound completely foreign, but if you just kind of want to quickly play it, it, it doesn't... It doesn't show you like the amount of effort that they've actually like put into it. If you sit down and say, "I'm gonna play this," it will blow your mind. It it is such a phenomenal game. So just to kind of take you on to the next point, we've we've talked about gaming as a whole. Um, all five of us are streamers. How how do you think streaming can or if it does negatively negatively impact on your mental health? Because I know, personally, I experience fatigue. Um, sometimes when you're like doing a, a long stream, it can affect your mental health. But on the flip side of that, I've had a really shitty day. And I've came home, hopped on stream, and instantly my mood's changed. You know, it, it's got the, the negative and positive aspects in, in my experience. But how do you think that, that relates to you guys? Do you think... Streaming does have a negative impact on your, your mental health, or do you think it, it helps you? I think of it more as um, an amplifier of whatever mood I'm in. If I'm in a really bad mood and I stream and it's not a good stream, it's going to make me feel a lot worse. But if I'm feeling good and it's a good stream, it makes me feel better. But um, that's just sometimes, sometimes a completely mood shift. You know, you're having a decently bad day not a terrible one and then you have some people come by it's like oh kind of just hanging out with my friends having fun and it can really kind of turn everything around what about you josh uh, um yeah so for me it's definitely more of it depends so streaming for me is it i i started streaming specifically to meet people to play games with and hang out with i don't do a whole lot outside of work and coming home um i moved a lot a lot of my friends were in the navy in the military and whatnot and they're you know nowhere near me um anymore so kind of like my circle of friends that i kind of had um you know it's limited to text messages uh phone calls here and there um and a lot of them I gamed with, and a lot of them don't game anymore. So I started streaming and immediately started meeting all of you guys. And it's been fantastic. Um, in terms of gaming or streaming, getting to a point where it's not necessarily, not, not necessarily not helpful, but I probably use it as kind of my own pill for whatever I'm dealing with at the moment. Um, depression anxiety is obviously always kind of a thing um i don't i don't really talk about it i'm probably more of like you know my pre you guys know my personality it's not something that i i don't i haven't really brought up my personal struggles with it um but i will say the um there are times when you know you kind of it doesn't necessarily it, it gets to a point where depending on where i'm at um i would say usually it helps and usually obviously it helps a lot and it puts me in a lot better place um but sometimes i'm just not in a good place at all and it's not going to help and no matter if i stream or play it's not going to do anything it's not i don't think it has anything to do with the game it has nothing to do with the stream the people it's just where i am personally at this point and um and then those times, you know, I stay up till four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> <Can't sleep. laughs> I think we've all felt that one. <laughs> what about you, G Flow? Um, I, I, I can kind of get on board with like it's a, sometimes an amplifier for my mood. Um, a little bit. Uh, 
particularly with my bad moods uh if i'm ever having a really bad day um especially where i work i'm gonna be honest man i work with some idiots uh <laughs> i've experienced this uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> i work with some idiots um uh and it ends up being a bad day especially when i'm in a bad mood it really, really definitely amplifies it but uh outside of that i mean most of the things that i like to do uh streaming it for me is my uh my way of being social because uh, i can kind of uh you know get on board here with humps like you know as a military person uh, i'm very kept to myself i wake up i go to work i get home i cook i get i play video games if you can't find a way to fit yourself somewhere in between i'm sorry i'm not gonna really just <laughs> offset my, like that's just kind of how the way i am um unless i go out of my way to make time for you which i do for one individual but like um but like for me personally like uh like you know when i play video games like uh, I know a lot of you, I, know, it's, I think a lot of you guys play like first person shooters and competitive games. Um, I don't really play that unless I'm like streaming uh, or I'm sorry, uh, playing Final Fantasy during Fridays and Saturdays. Outside of that, like uh, I'm talking, I'm hanging out. Uh, I, I, most of the time I'll sit and chat for like, I'll sit and chat for like two hours at the end of my streams talking about like, you know, hey, what's up, man? You talking to this girl? Yo, was she into you? Did she like you? You know, like. I, I, like you know kind of those like those things you would have with people in front of you yeah. but like I, I don't have that here uh unfortunately all my friends think when i left the military and came back they think i'm an asshole um so they don't really communicate with me so i communicate with that with like my friends here i mean i've most of my people in my chat uh, uh billy uh, being one of them uh i've met met, met him in person uh, i'm a fairly chatty individual um whenever i'm in person so uh, that's just how I like to be in chat too. I'll sit there, you know, tell me about your day. You'll know, sit you, I'll, we'll, we'll sit there, you know, we'll, we'll talk about it. You know, I'm not a therapist by no means, please. But like, we'll sit there and we'll talk about it. That's just what I like to do. So, um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's a little bit of both. Like, you know, it, it's one of those things where it can be an amplifier, especially if I'm in a bad mood. Uh, outside of that, it's just my way of being social. That's a good take on things. And what about you, Grog? Um, so my my uh history with video games is complicated um so i when i was a kid i was an only child and um I, i've i've kind of made no i've minced no words about having like um difficult relationship with my parents growing up and uh, i spent a lot of time alone um like not like quite quite literally uh, in that sense i was a latchkey kid and um when I was much younger, like say elementary, early middle school, like video games were were a fantastic way to socialize with people. It was the era of couch co-op. You know, I would go play bubble bobble with a friend. You know, like I would. It was all about going to somebody's house and playing games. I remember and those days. There, oh my god! <laughs> if there wasn't if there wasn't co-op, you just sat and watched your friend play, and you would just chill and vibe yep. and hang out, and that was it. Uh, you know, if it wasn't a two player game, you just watch your friend play and then you're like, uh, is it my turn yet? And it kind of depended <laughs> on whose house it was. If yeah. it was their house, uh, you probably watch more than you played. And if it was your house, you probably played more than you watched. Um, and that was my experience. The thing is, later um, in like late middle school, going into high school, um, you know, kind of the, the mid to late 90s, for me, this was like the era of online gaming. Online gaming became a thing. I, I went to my cousin's one Thanksgiving, I think. I played Half-Life. I saw it for the first time. It blew my fucking mind. Uh, and then I went home, I think, like a month or two later and got on my uh, computer and um, on my dial-up modem and played, like, Half-Life Deathmatch and thought, like, it was, like, the greatest. Um, the thing is, also, at that point in my life... Uh, I was struggling more, right? Because you you have all these hormonal changes, you have all these social changes. And like for me, uh, I grew up in a real small town with not a lot of people. Um, my graduating class at a public high school was about 65. It should have been about 80, but a bunch of kids dropped out. A lot of them quit early to like work um, for their parents. And um, so like everybody knew everybody and everybody was up in everybody's business. But the thing is, is that being a different kid, being into... Um, you know, like punk and being into metal and being into just just not being the same uh, meant that you were an easy target to be labeled as different. And so for me, um, I found less and less opportunities to have those couch co-op moments to hang out at a friend's house because I had less and less friends. 
uh, they got older, they got into sports, they they got into different things, and I I I felt alone. Um, so for me, online gaming was a great outlet because then I I met people through you know things like Half Life and things you know I I um, you know things like early Counter Strike, Counter Strike Beta, um, things like uh, La- um, Left for Dead and Team Fortress and like the Team Fortress uh, One, and I would find servers that like were comfortable and accommodating where where i would i could be a regular face that was kind of my first interaction like before there was streaming like you just could find a server and call it your own and you could be a regular there uh you could be modded there you could you know like set up private matches there and it became an opportunity to like see and be seen um and with people who had a similar interest and we're also from different backgrounds and then as i got older um you know college and other shit gets in the way and you have to scale back your ability to game but it was always a thing that i i kept as a as a constant and honestly if i didn't have it as an outlet i think that i would have been worse off in a lot of ways i think right now i speak a lot i as everyone on the podcast already knows i talk (laughs) a lot um but i talk a lot when i'm passionate about something when I feel shy or I'm uncertain, I, I don't. I can talk a lot about gaming because I love it. I can talk a lot with you guys and, and with the chat because I love it. For me, it can be triggering in both ways to, to cycle back to Billy's original point or question, which was, um, does it make it better or worse? Um, Dennis mentioned in chat, competitive games can sometimes be more affecting in a negative way um, than non-competitive games. Uh, multiplayer games can be more uh, affecting in a negative way than single player games. Um, I think for me, I've always looked at, I like competitive games, not because I'm a competitive person, but because I personally don't hold high, I don't put a high price tag on myself. I don't have a a high view of myself. And I've, I've been, um, I've, I've been rather cruel to myself over the years. And I think that for me, competitive gaming has allowed me to see growth mm-hmm. where I cannot see it in myself in the present. Um, I can see it happen in a game. I can watch a score go up. I can watch my skill go up. And for me, that has always been the driving factor. But on days when I'm really struggling, if I'm already, if there's something outside that's been affecting me um, or something that happens in the game um, or in the chat, you know, um, it could definitely amplify those feelings to the point where I, I, I end stream early and have a, have a breakdown uh, and spend hours crying and it, it, and then I don't stream the next day or I, I come back and it, it, I'm just, I'm off my game um, or I get invited off stream to play and then I'm just like dead silent. And as somebody who likes to talk, it, that's weird. Cause I'm just like, people are like, Hey man, how's it going? It's fun. <laughs> um, so like I, but I think like G Flow said, it it really can be, at least for me, um, an accelerant in either direction. If I'm having a great day, if I'm having a great interaction with chat, if I'm having a great game, if I'm if I'm with friends and everything's clicking, the banter is great, and we're losing the game, it doesn't fucking matter. I'm feeling amazing. And it has elevated me to points of joy that I I have experienced outside of gaming sometimes i can get there faster with games i can i can reach that high point easier if things are clicking and going right but they don't always do that um and sometimes i'm not always the best person uh at picking the right content for my mood so i'll play a competitive game when i really shouldn't be uh i'll play a single player game when maybe i'm actually feeling like i want to uh you know uh socialize with people more but you know that's life is a process you know so like it's you're not you gotta you're not gonna get it right every time i think one of the the positives that we can take from this that everyone's mentioned it doesn't really matter about the the game but the relationships that you actually make through these video games have helped each and every one of us and it just kind of goes to show what, what you said grog it doesn't matter if you're losing if you've got the the positivity and the banter and the the good vibes coming through it can elevate your mood 
way beyond what what you you need you know you, the amount of times that i've played with you guys and i'm just i'm crying from laughter and we're losing but it's i think the relationships that you make within video games streaming and just hanging out in people's chat i think it, it makes all this worth it you know obviously when when we stream there's like i switch platforms in january and obviously my my numbers took a significant hit but i had you guys i had you guys to completely raise me up there and uh condi was absolutely amazing he was like just keep at it um like you're a good streamer keep going and if i didn't have that like emotional support who knows what would have happened you know i would have probably quit streaming probably stopped gaming for a long time and i think that's a huge positive that not a lot of people especially news outlets even touch on and um i'm kind of piggybacking off of something that grog said on his stream last week or earlier in the week um i felt exactly the same it's just streaming is the one thing that i've been able to keep with like consistently and it's mostly because of the people that i've met along the way because i've gone through my life trying to find a hobby i'll get really into something for like maybe six months and then i drop it i never do it again and this is the first time that i've actually stuck with something for this long and it feels very good it's a uh, like uh, freeing knowing that you have this one point of stability that you can start relying on it's uh, very good mentally <laughs> i would agree with that mm -hmm. is there any other points we want to touch about mental health any experiences you want to talk about or i have a lot <laughs> <laughs> it's it's so um uh it's 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 funny how, not that you should ask that but how you ask that because um uh i i what i've tried to do in recent years um so i'm i'm 36 going on 37 this year um still look beautiful <laughs> you found a fountain oh. of youth. <laughs> one of the uh, uh i'll tell you the, the one thing is you get born looking like a baby and you stay looking like a baby uh through like your late 20s so that when you're in your 40s hopefully you you look kind of youthful um, <laughs> i got id'd by in this earlier i was like yeah. see these tattoos give me a break fuck <laughs> Your parents just signed off on those. We know. <laughs> it's shoppy. Um, anyway, um, what I've tried to do in the last few years is I've tried to be very vocal about try about talking about uh, my depression and talking about um, things that I experienced that I never talked about before. I never opened up. Um, my first thoughts of suicide were when I was thirteen. Um, and I, it would be, uh, <laughs> it would be difficult to quantify how many times I've thought about suicide. Uh, there was a period where I thought about it every day for probably a period of about nine years. Um, and I just started going to therapy three years ago. Um, I've mentioned all this because your question, Billy, I go to therapy every week. Um, I have, and so I've been, I've been maintaining that and that's been a new constant for me, a new addition to my routine. Um, and at the end of every session, uh, she'll say, you know, bef we're almost out of time, but before we go, is there anything else you, you want to talk about? And I always say, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, there's a lot, like I could talk at, like do you want to do you want to block out five hours like i mean what do you what do you want to do like <laughs> we could talk forever um i my experience with mental health is an interesting one not because of my background um or rather not limited to my background not limited to my um my home life not limited to the relationships i've had in life uh both intimate and and uh people that i've just known as friends um outside of all of that uh before i was a librarian uh and a 
hobbyist streamer. <laughs> um, I worked in mental health. Uh, I was a mental health technician at a behavioral health hospital for eight years, 10 months. I always just say nine because it's easier to round up. It feels like nine. So, you know, but um, I worked in a um, psychiatric unit. Uh, it was inpatient um, and it was, there was some voluntary admittance, but by and large, it was mostly people who were 302'd. Uh, so this was uh, individuals who had gone to a mental health court, seen a mental health court judge um, and were judged to be incapable of caring for themselves in some capacity and were given uh, time that they uh, had to be in a hospital. Uh, so I worked in a locked unit and I worked with short-term patients and I worked with long-term patients. And I spent probably six of those years um, working with long-term acute. Uh, so this is people who had a chronic problem with uh, mental health and um, and it ranged from, you know, um, people who were maybe bipolar, people who were schizophrenic, people who were, uh, who had Munchausen syndrome, people who were, had dual diagnosis and were, you know, um, for anyone who doesn't know, if you ever hear the term dual diagnosis, it just means that you maybe have substance abuse issues in addition with maybe a mental health diagnosis. Um, that job was eye-opening in a lot of ways. And Without belaboring the point and taking up too much more of your time, um, I, I just, I guess what I would say is this. Mental health can affect anyone at any point in their life. We had people who had never been under treatment, had never voluntarily or involuntarily sought help, who were admitted in their 60s. They had never, you know, like it just happened. Something happened. A, a traumatic life event happened, or there was a series of smaller events over the course of their life that built up to a, th a thing, and then there was a release, and then they were there. Um, we had people who were 18 who had been in juvenile um, uh, uh, treatment facilities and would probably be in some sort of facility through the better part of their adulthood. Um, we had some patients who were there for years. We had some patients who left and had amazing recovery stories. We had a lot of patients who there is recidivism, you know, meaning that they were in, then they were out, then they were in, then they were out, then they were in, they were out. Um, what it comes down to is this: your 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 biological makeup, your background, your um, economic status, your race, your ethnicity, your religious belief, all of that. Mental health doesn't care about that because having depression, having anxiety, having any other kind of diagnoses, which neurologically affects you in ways that you can't control, can happen to anyone at any point in your life for no reason. There doesn't have to be a reason. You don't have to have done something wrong. You don't have to have done something right. Um, you 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 can just be the victim of a disease or diseases that fundamentally shift your ability to perceive the world around you in ways that others do and or you perceive it clearly but you can't process it and regardless of whatever that issue is none of us are immune from it it affects all of us and it's it's a topic that like many things <laughs> is just not talked about because it's hard it's it's uncomfortable. We don't like talking about things that make us uncomfortable. And um, I think 2020 is, I'm not saying 2020 is the year that we start talking about uncomfortable things because we should have been talking about uncomfortable things for generations. Um, but I, I hope that people can get past avoiding uncomfortable conversations simply because they don't like the feeling of having to put in the work to move through it and process it and and improve together um because if we we've already failed enough people on a social level and we individually have probably failed either ourselves or individuals we know in our life at some point to some degree and we can always do better. 
And although it may feel weird to listen to somebody um, talk through this stuff, that's only that's not even a tenth of the of mm. of the shit that they are themselves processing. Yeah. Through. Um, so. I don't really know where the end of this is going, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I, I guess, I guess, I guess I just wanted to just say, this isn't about, oh, I've got a buddy who has depression or I have a, a friend and she's got anxiety or, you know, whatever, but that's not me. You know, I'm ha happy, go lucky. Like, seriously, there could be a traumatic event in your near future that categorically shifts your entire life and turns it sideways. Um, and it may never write itself again. And it doesn't, um, I'll add on that. It doesn't, yeah. it won't even have to be, I don't even think it has to be something traumatic. It could be as simple as getting out of the military. That's when it hit for me. Yep. <laughs> oh, that's, 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 all it took. that's all it took, man. I, I, I don't, I, I don't know. Those were dark times, man. <laughs> for you. Oh, well, I mean, for, for, for me, me, it was. So for me, my military, like, so that's kind of why I paused a little earlier when you kind of uh, cyber, when you kind of, you know, asked the question earlier about like, you know, kind of what we did. Mm -hmm. I didn't do anything. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I think a lot of military members and I, I'm speaking specifically for Navy. That's what I have experience from. I, I can't speak to the other branches, um, but I was a uh, nuclear operator. I operated all the electrical systems regarding uh, that interacted interface with the nuclear reactor of a submarine. That's what I did. And then I taught kids how to do it. That's all I did. Yes, I was on a submarine. Children? Yes, we went places. I can't tell you where we went. <laughs> you can imagine where we went or whatever. But, you know, this is 2020, not World War II. So things didn't happen like. What you would expect. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So for the most part, it was like being on an airplane for three to six months out of the year. That's, that's kind of like, that's kind of what it was just. I was joking around. So that was my experience in the military. It wasn't craziness. Nothing. Ex well, I wouldn't say nothing exploded. A lot of things, things blew up. But <laughs> it, was, it wasn't like, <laughs> it wasn't like what people associate with like, ah, military, this is what you did. So like, I always, I yeah. always kind of am standoffish when people kind of talk about veterans and because it's my, per go ahead, go ahead. No, no, I was just going to say, it's just, a, it's a different path for everyone. Everyone, everyone yeah. goes through different things. Like you don't like, 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 you know, and it, it, and it varies, even though in branch, I mean, even if you're in the same branch, it still varies. Like mm -hmm. someone can sit there and be like, oh yeah, dude, what'd you do? Oh, dude, man, I was dude, I pushed papers like all eight years of my career. And someone could be like, bro, I got two purple hearts. I got a fucking yep. bronze star, you know, like, it, yeah. you know, like it, it's such a wide spectrum, um, you know, like, so. I don't always expect it to like to always be the same. I mean, it's always going to be different. Everyone always goes through different things, you know. And that that's so, probably yeah. ignorance on on my part. Like, I'm I, I lead a very sheltered life. You know, I don't really leave my my bedroom, and it it, it wasn't so much like a a broad statement. You know, like you you guys were bred for violence. It, it was more trying to like open up that that topic. Um, oh, no, 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 I wasn't, I, I wasn't meaning, I no, I wasn't trying to like, no, 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 oh, no, no, I get that, I get that, no, I get that, I get that. I was just kind of said, like, that's my reference point, but even that light, ref that reference point, not being of what probably most people think of when they think of veterans and military personnel, um, when I left the military, that's when my anxiety, my depression, that's when it hit. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it was just because I don't I don't I don't know why it was. I mean, I, I'm still figuring it out. I, I think uh, I think I can kind of help with that a little bit. And because uh, 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 it's been five years. <laughs> <laughs> so so one of the big one of the biggest things that uh, for me, my like my darkest times, again, my de uh, my depression, my anxiety and everything through the roof uh, skyrocketed when I got out. Uh, two reasons. So, again, I say everyone's past different in the military. Uh, one fact I don't, uh, which is, it's not a really good one, but one fact about me in the unit that I worked with, unfortunately, uh, we had between the years of 2012 to 2014 in the army, our unit had the highest suicide rate. Um, my reasoning for getting out of the army was because I was surrounded by such a horrible stigma that I didn't want to see myself become a statistic. Mm -hmm. I got out. 
I got out. That was my reasoning for getting out. Uh, on top of that, um, my five year, uh, my five year marriage at the time, my, my lady just decided to just up and leave. She didn't want to come with me anymore. Uh, so I mean, so it was like a lot of negativity one after another, and then I got out, and then I'm sitting there, and you get out of the army, right? You're like, fuck, finally, yes, I'm out, freedom, no more uniform, I can grow a beard, my hair can be long, ah, <laughs> oh, yes, and then you sit there. What do I do now? Oh yeah. my god, what do I do now? A, a lot of it, man. I'm gonna be real with you. The, the the biggest thing when I got out was like, you don't have anyone telling you what to do, and, and it's true. But I shouldn't say veterans, military people when they have no structure is a very unstable thing. And uh, for me, that's why I kind of give myself a little bit of structure because the second I gave myself structure, which is why I like, I go out, I come home, I do certain things. I force myself to do them. I feel just slightly better, but it, 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 that's honestly what it is. It's like, we're just, we're so mindset and engraved in there where we're like, Hey, so is anyone going to tell me what to do? Like, are we just gonna no? Like you sit there and you like, you have all this time in the world, like in, 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 in any branch, in any branch, uh, and I'm, I'm positive in any branch, someone's always telling you to, you always have a boss who's just sitting there telling you what to do. Hey, go do this. Go, go, go clean the bathroom with a toothbrush. <laughs> go push these fucking papers. You know, like you always have someone to do. You get out and you're like, you know, at first it's all fine and dandy, but then you sit there and you're like, what do I do? Like. I, I did it. I mean, don't get me wrong. I I didn't have a job for two years when I got out of the army. I was just sitting there like, I don't know. I'll, I'll figure it out along the way, taking it day by day. You know, I didn't fucking work. I didn't go to school. I didn't do nothing. I was just sitting there like, and that's this period right now. And, you know, honestly, man, for me, that period is coming to a close because uh, I got out in 2015. It's 2020 right now. Five years to the date, actually, um, since I got out. And I actually am going to school full time, full ride in Florida in like two months. So I'm like closing that part out where I'm like, like yeah, I I'm incredibly <laughs> proud of you doing that. I've told you this before, but grats, seriously. <laughs> so, thanks, man. So like, it, it, it's like one of those things where it's like, kind of like, you know, you sit there and you're like, I, I don't know how long it's going to take you, man. And you'll find it. But these five years I've been sitting here and I'm like. I tried the streaming thing. I've been working all these random obscure jobs that don't really seem like a career. You kind of, you know, dipping your toes into a lot of things. And I'm finally like, you know what? I want to go do what I want to go do. And, you know, I got out. I applied for a school. VA took forever because they always do. But you know what? We got it done. And I'm on my way out the door in less than two months. Uh, personally, man, the best, the best advice I can give you in these instances, man, is like, if you've never given yourself like insane structure, like just force yourself a structure and make everyone else like your friends work around it, you might feel a little bit more comfortable and probably a little bit of that depression and anxiety will go away. Because when I sit there and tell myself I have to do certain things and, you know, like, and if I don't do it, you know, like, like if I don't do it, like I, I kind of correct myself for some apparent reason it worked out for me. And, you know, and, and it does like, I mean, you can, you, you can even ask cyber whenever we would go to cons, I was a very structured individual. Yep. I'm going <laughs> but, here. Like, I'm speaking to this person. No, I'm going here. And I was like, I <laughs> got you later, buddy. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and I do it to myself because like, if I didn't like not having that structure was probably like, it's like, you just sit in a black hole and you just like, not, you don't, you know, you just, okay, we'll just wait for things to happen. I mean, uh, it's different for everyone personally, but uh, I think that helped a lot with my depression and i should say my anxiety depression not so much i got over my depression like right before i got out of like you know the army but anxiety and like you know i was very uneasy about a lot of things it, like it's it, like the second i got out it just skyrocketed because i had no direction i had no one telling me what to do and it, it's it's different it's different you know yeah so. i know this is uh like a very volatile subject to bring up but I felt we needed to have this conversation and I just want to say thank you and I'm proud of each and every one of you just for explaining, you know, discussing uh, the, the stories and just thank you, seriously. I, I think um, I'd like to touch on something that, that Dennis mentioned in chat. Um, he asked uh, he asked the question of me, um, how do I feel about opening up uh, to my community? I guess I would extend that to to springboard off of Billy's statements just now, which is to say, have these conversations with your, your community. I mean, I, I feel, 
I, th- I, I didn't respond to you in chat because I, th- I was in the moment of like this long diatribe of just like word salad. Um, so I thought that that in of itself explained how uh, open I feel. Um, I think the best thing that we can all do, um, whether you are, whether you have a platform or not, um, talk to people, just be open about this shit. And, and, and the, here's the thing, here's the thing. I want to clarify if you are struggling with something and you are not ready to talk to people, I'm not telling you to talk to people. I'm not telling you to do anything you don't feel comfortable with. Um, there are, um, discrete ways to get help. There are discrete ways, uh, and anonymous ways to seek assistance, um, that do not involve you feeling like you're, you gotta like split yourself open and just, you know, give everybody what's inside, um, freely, uh, without, you know, with full permission. I, I get that. But I think that for anyone who feels comfortable doing it, I think these are conversations that just need to continue. Um, just like with Black Lives Matter, just like with, um, you know, Believe All Women, just like with any number of topics surrounding issues that we should have been talking about as a, as a, as a society and, and have been avoiding because of discomfort, we just got to stop. We got to stop avoiding them. Um, so... I think if there's any one thing that anyone can take away from this this conversation um, with all of the people here, both in chat and on the panel, um, have these conversations with your community when it's when you can permit it, when it's appropriate, um, if you want to. But I think it's yeah. I think we we've all got a, a responsibility to check in with everybody. You know, even if it's just. Hey dude, how you doing? And if they they choose to open up or not, at least you're you're giving them that that opportunity to receive like some support. I I personally didn't receive that back in the day, and I wish I did. Um, there was uh there was an instance earlier that happened where um somebody that I know ended the stream early, um, and I felt it like a responsibility but not out of a selfless way i i wanted to say are you okay you know i noticed you ended the stream early what's up and even if they said don't worry about it like i feel like we still need instances like that i feel like as a community there's a lot of toxicity toxicity on twitch and it can get to you and I feel like as a community, if we were all nicer to each other and open about all the things that we've just said, it's not going to be a fix, but it's going to make things a lot easier. You know, if we were all not, I'm, I'm going to use the Scottish term, cunts to each other, I feel like it's a step in the right direction. I feel like this camaraderie and support needs to happen more. And who knows what other people are going through. Obviously, mental health is faceless, you know. No one no one can say this guy has got mental health. And I don't really know where I'm going with this, but just be better individuals, you know. Um, support listen, each other. Listen listen more than you speak sometimes exactly you know read the room play yeah. it exactly but um if is anybody else got anything i think um i think that's a, a good place um so grog uh where can people find you uh what you got going on and what would you like to plug um so they can uh, find me on um, Twitch and YouTube at just underscore grog. That's J-U-S-T <laughs> underscore G-R-O-G. Um, I'm on Twitter at gamer underscore grog. Um, I stream four days a week, sometimes five. I'm trying to work out a new schedule with Lauren, uh, my wife, to do more Saturdays. I think we'll move to like doing afternoons instead of mornings because... Mm-hmm. We're not, neither of us are morning people. <laughs> um, <laughs> I feel that. <laughs> so it, it's hard getting two people who aren't morning people to be prompt. Um, 
So we're going to continue, I think, doing more variety of games in the future. And um, I guess just on a personal note, um, I, I can't uh, speak to all the details yet, but my life's going to get a little weird in the near future. Um, I'm returning to work, but then there will be circumstances that come into play, which may change the nature of what work means. Uh, and I may be um, streaming more often again. We'll see. Um, on top of that, we got like construction going on at the house and and we'll be doing that next week. So like my, my schedule is like maybe going to be fucked for a month. Um, but after that, maybe good. And we'll see. <laughs> Mr. Humps, same question to you. Uh, where can people find you? What you got going on and what would you like to plug? Uh, you can find me on the Sir Humps's Sir Humps on Twitch. <laughs> insta and then sir humps add a little underscore if you want to get me on twitter because sir humps it's a it's a it's a blocked account it's banned it, it's suspended and it's been suspended this entire time why can't i just have it you i still I, mean? I still remember the day you were so excited you were like i've got my name change fuck twitter's taken yeah. <laughs> it's a bitch anyway <laughs> underscore throw that in there check it out it's <laughs> random I don't know. Anyway, stream, I like to stream at least three days a week. I work rotating shift work, so usually it's Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I try to do a makeup day if I work one or two of those days. Um, and I'm kind of not sure the same boat as Grog. There might be features changing, but that's uh, you yep. That, brother. <laughs> but we'll see. We're not putting the cart before the horse yet. But, um, but yeah. Uh, you know, and uh, the beardless, I mean, the mighty kibbles, what you got going on? Um, yeah, kind of mimicking everything that they said. I we got some stuff coming up. <laughs> <laughs> um, but this this week is going to be a little rough for streams because work is keeping me late. So, uh, Monday and Wednesday, I will be starting probably like two hours later than usual. But Wednesday is my birthday, so Friday, I'm oh gonna be shit, doing a birthday hey, stream. Oh, hell yeah. Hey. yeah. But you can find me at The Mighty Kibbles on Twitch and YouTube, TikTok, uh, DA Mighty Kibbles on Twitter. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, G Flow, I just want yeah. to thank you so much for being our special guest, um, speaking you, about sir. everything sure. that we spoke about. Sure. Um, where can people find you? What you got going on? And what would you like to plug? Oh, thank you. Uh, yeah, so if you guys uh, ever want to hang out, uh, I do stream in the evenings uh, as I do work 50 to 60 hours a week. Um, I do stream in the evenings anywhere after 8 p.m., uh, normally Monday through Saturday. Uh, Friday and Saturdays for sure. Um, and if you feel like just talking about whatever, um, uh, I'm there. Uh, I do have a couple of things where uh, I'm currently... Uh, I've gotten into making mixed drinks on stream recently. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, I'm tuning in, baby. <laughs> yeah. He's bringing his notepad. He's going to be like... <laughs> yeah, I've, I've, <laughs> I've, 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 I've gotten into making these uh, these, these uh, mixed drinks on stream. Uh, actually, I think I'm going to go buy some, la uh, some of the beverages later today. Um, I'm going to be making a bunch of uh, Mega Man style drinks. Oh, hell yeah. Drinks sort of stuff like that so if you guys want to learn feel free we'll most likely do that next uh next saturday uh outside of that like i said i move in two months to florida uh streams will definitely be a little bit slower but uh, i'll be streaming like two hours at most every like in the evenings just kind of cooking and, and hanging out so if you guys like cooking making drinks um that'll probably be the thing past september other than that i'll be playing video games until then so feel free to stop by hell yeah Thanks. And uh, I am Real the. Quick. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, go for it. I forgot about you. That's, it happens. Go ahead, <laughs> I am the Cyber Project. You can catch me on Twitch, Instagram, TikTok, all major platforms. The Cyber Project. I do have a YouTube channel. I still haven't uploaded the stuff that I said I was going to upload, but it is coming. Um, Humps, what were you going to say? Oh, I was just, all I was going to say is happy Father's Day to all you fathers out there. That's all I was going to say. Yes, okay. happy Father's Day to all of you, <laughs> all you dads out there. 
Uh, I think it's I'm different not here. Dad, but I'm not a dad gamer. All right? <laughs> <laughs> You've got a dad bod, though. Confusion and a pulse rifle. Shut your mouth. <laughs> Guys, we are. Have been deleted. <laughs> <laughs> we are trying to grow our Twitter. Um, so please go follow the Twitter. You will be able to keep up to date. Um, the future events for this channel. What we are hoping to do is um, stream a little bit more during the week. And we are, we've got some goals in mind. So stay tuned for that. Um, and I do want to say there is an announcement. We are going to be open up the Zero Strategy Discord. Um, we obviously haven't got a, a command for that yet, but we will be opening that up. We want to give you a platform to speak, and that is one of the reasons why we do this. And we feel that Discord is only going to elevate that status. Uh, if we are not live, you can still catch us there. But I want to. We also get some of the best questions from chat too. Like exactly. That's why I love doing this live because like people bring up topics that um or bring up topics and or add counterpoints that that stimulate the conversation so this would be another opportunity to do that and you know we'll probably be asking people you know for ideas for future topics they'd like to see discussed and things like that exactly exactly uh i've already said it but i want to say it again uh each and every one of you guys thank you so much for explaining and talking about your experiences genuinely i love you guys and thank you but we will catch you next week, next Sunday. Um, don't forget to follow the Twitter. And thank you so much. And we will see you next time. Smooth. Bye-bye.